We would like to start today's video with a big thank you to our very generous patrons. We would especially like to thank one of our most recent patrons, Joshua. Thank you so much for your support, Joshua, and if you have any requests for reviews, tutorials, or any other content, please do let us know over at Patreon. If you too like what we are doing and wish to offer your support to the channel, please see our Patreon link in the description below. The AXI Icarus is currently performing a long-range patrol of several nebula that surrounds the permit-locked region. Investigating for signs of Thargoid presence and any danger it may pose to remote human colonies. After visiting the Hind Nebula, California Nebula and NGC-1333 Nebula, we took a detour to Orion to check with the Orion Tourist Centre. Now we are to conduct a small survey before continuing on towards Outhoods, where our carriers await. For this expedition I am joined by Commander Pixtru, friend of the channel and fellow commander at the AXI, and his carrier, the AXI Somnium. And while I had lightly surveyed the incredibly dense starfield of Orion on a previous trip, Commander Pixtru was about to lead us to something very strange in the Oort system. Oh wow, that is colourful, oh my god. <laughs> my eyes, they burn. The, the main attack of the lifeform series to cause epileptic seizures. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, let's go in. This is a notable stellar phenomena. Large colourful gas clouds that host a range of objects, entities and anomalies not found anywhere else. Yeah, I only see two crystals so this is a cluster of them. I had never visited one myself and so this was a very novel experience. But Commander Pixture is a seasoned explorer and so had something to show me while we were here. Oh, in VR, that is spectacular. Wow. Okay, so what, 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 what you, you want me to come up near you, yeah? Uh, yeah, hold on so I can move. Oh, I see it. Okay, I'm going to fly towards it with my lights on. I see it moving around. Just like a little thing. With that, look, it's giving you your little shield kisses. It got inside my shield. Oh no, it, it, seems, it seems to like you. Novel void ecology life forms were not the only subjects of interest out here. Even the clouds themselves could be very strange indeed. Oh, wow, this one's cool. This one's like bright pink. <laughs> Oh! Oh, I gotta check that huge, but if you stay near it, it'll do shield regeneration. What? I mean, it's... different abilities. And of course, you can stick a research limpet into it and tear off a piece of its flesh to sell. For science. For science. Yes, for, for science. science. God. <laughs> I'm not wrong though. Alright, I'm headed over to the uh... Okay. This one was bright pink on the outside and it's really, really dark on the inside. Oh cool, it's so inside of it is my future. <laughs> like come inside this way is so dark. Of course, if you encounter an impenetrable black abyss like this, there really is only one question the curious mind can ask, right? I'm gonna try and fly through to the other side, see if anything weird happens. Venturing deep into the abyss. Well, I don't know, on the inside here it's kind of... Pretty. 
should, if we find any storm clouds on the road, we're going to have so much fun. Oh, does that ship have shields, by the way, Katie? <laughs> no, no, no shields. One, thing. one lightning strike and she's done for. <laughs> on, this is like driving in a blizzard. And so the time had come to leave Orion. The path we are taking to Atuts will see us pass by Messier 78, a small blue nebula in front of Bernard's Loop. The encounter is only brief though. On the route we would see the angle of Bernard's Loop shift ever more as we inched closer and closer to our awaiting carriers. Since setting out we have found active Thargoid barnacles in California, though no evidence of Thargoids in the other nebulas. Though by reputation alone, it was likely that Autoots would break the run of bad luck. Wait, are you, you're already at Outa. We'd sent the carriers ahead, back when we were leaving the California Nebula. It was definitely a welcome sight to see them again. Katie, are you ready for the system name? Yeah, go ahead. HD49368. Okay. Now, this particular Outood system has a rich history with the Thargoids and is the main supporting evidence that the permit locked region is Thargoid related. The Canon megaship, the Gnosis, attempted to make a jump into the permit lock cone sector, but was repelled mid-jump by the Thargoids, and left stranded here. The mere fact that the Thargoids hyperdicted the vessel, rather than have it enter the sector, seems very telling to me. But when you add that fact to what can be found here in Ututs, I think it is easy to draw a conclusion here. All around this moon we find the unencumbered outcome of barnacle growth. The enormous size and strength that this life form can reach was something I was about to encounter firsthand. Barnacle forests can be found at other Thargoid hotspots, but here we find so many on a single planet. We are at the very edge of the permit locked region, and maybe that is why we find such strange, foreboding landscapes of spikes and harmful glow. We'd made efforts back in California to coax an encounter with a Thargoid interceptor at several barnacle sites, but had not been successful there. Maybe here, in Otuts, we could draw them out. At some of these alien landscapes you will find yet another entity of the Thargoid race, the Scavenger. These drone-like creatures seem to tend up to the Thargoid structures and barnacles and are mostly benign, They will defend themselves if provoked. What they do here and their role in barnacle cultivation is unknown, and they are most commonly found at the vast Thargoid structures than barnacle sites, though when they are found, the barnacle mounds have always grown to gargantuan size, with the most aggressive of spires surrounding them. It is also perhaps worth noting that unlike every other barnacle site, this location and planet is not within or adjacent to a nebula. Bernard's Loop is nearest, but it is several hundred light years away. There is nothing of note out here except the border of the permit-locked region. Perhaps then this place does indeed serve 
as a sign of just what that inaccessible region of space contains. And while contemplating this, the sky would finally open and we would confirm Thargoids were active in our totes. The Thargoid interaction with barnacles is also still somewhat of a mystery. We know their craft are built from meta-alloy and suspect these visits to be a kind of refueling, but as of yet have no way to confirm this. Though following this encounter and the arrival of Commander Pix's crew, I decided to switch to a more combat-capable vessel, and on our way to investigate another of the moon's barnacle forests, we came across our first hostile encounter with the Thargoid since leaving the Pleiades. The fight was over quickly and we were able to continue on to investigate another of the many barnacle forests on the moon. The most interesting Thargoid location though was yet to come, as the moon is also home to a derelict Thargoid structure. These massive alien complexes can be found at various Thargoid hotspots and some are even still active and filled with working devices. This location though is known to be both abandoned and in disrepair, with the interior of the structure completely caved in. Still, it is worth visiting to confirm it has not been repaired by the Thargoids during humanity's absence.
After leaving the Thargoid structure, it was time to start planning the next phase of our patrol. And this marked both a point of no return and the beginning of the venture into the true unknown. We were heading to the far side of the permit-locked region, to the Jellyfish Nebula. After this point, we would have no option to turn back without completing the patrol. We would survey the local systems for any signs of Thargoid presence before moving on to the Monkey Head and Crab Nebulas. While it was unlikely that we would find anything, the recent Thargoid attacks made it necessary to check in on the remote human outposts in the nebula. It would be a long journey out there, but we were ready to face whatever may come. Glory to mankind.